China has chosen to take affairs into its own hands and build its own semiconductors in response to the global chip shortage, which is causing the output to slow down across all industries. In spite of the fact that numerous Chinese technology titans are making strides in the industry, analysts believe that complete technological independence is still a pipe dream. In everything from computer processors to laptops to smartphones to autos to televisions to consumer electronics to household appliances, semiconductor chips have a role. The production of semiconductors is a very complex and polluting process that necessitates a large number of resources as well as technological acumen. In an effort to compete with global leaders like Taiwan, the United States, and South Korea, China began investing in the country's young semiconductor manufacturing industry about a decade ago. Due to the fact that semiconductor chips are increasingly becoming a valuable strategic resource, the government does not want to be completely reliant on its competitors. However, even though China has made tremendous strides, it is still light years behind semiconductor behemoths such as Intel, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company or TSMC, AMD, and others in terms of technology. An effort to manufacture domestic semiconductors or chips by China's technology behemoths is considered as a step forward in the country's quest to become self-sufficient in this crucial technology. China is still a long way off from being self-sufficient, even though it has taken a step forward, according to one expert, who added that the country is still largely reliant on foreign technology and is falling behind in the so-called leading-edge segment of the semiconductor industry. Semiconductors are essential components in a wide range of products, from cell phones to modern refrigerators to automobiles. They have also emerged as a crucial focal point in the greater technological competition between the United States and China. Chinese authorities have been pouring money into expanding the country's domestic chip industry for years, but the country has failed to keep up with arrivals in the United States and other regions of Asia. Semiconductors are increasingly being regarded as a critical component of national security in many countries, as well as a display of technological prowess. It seems like every major Chinese technology company has made a statement this year about the use of chip manufacturing in the country. Baidu announced the release of Kunlun 2, its second-generation artificial intelligence processor. Alibaba released a semiconductor that is intended for use in servers and cloud computing. According to some resources, smartphone manufacturer Oppo is also creating its own high-end processors for its devices. However, even though these companies are creating their own chips, they may still have to rely on third-party tools to complete the task. China's internet giants, however, continue to rely significantly on foreign enterprises when it is engaged in manufacturing and the larger supply chain. CNBC reached out to Bain and company partner Peter Hanbury, who told CNBC that this is a minor step forward of being more self-sufficient in semiconductors. Specific instances of domestically designed chips are shown below but a significant amount of intellectual property, production, equipment, and materials are still sourced from outside the United States. The motive these companies are manufacturing their own chips is so that they may separate themselves from their competition by developing semiconductors for specialized applications. Take a deeper look at the specifications of the silicon being developed, and you'll notice China's reliance on foreign firms. Consider the new Yitian 710 chip from Alibaba. This is based on the architecture developed by the British semiconductor company ARM. It will also be constructed using the so-called 5 nanometer process, which is currently the most sophisticated semiconductor technology available. Baidu's Kunlun 2 chip is built using a 7 nanometer manufacturing technique. Oppo, on the other hand, is rumored to be working on a 3 nanometer chip. Currently, the country does not have a company that is capable of manufacturing these cutting-edge semiconductors in such small quantities. Intel from the United States, Taiwan's TSMC, and South Korea's Samsung will be the only companies that can supply them with the necessary components. In terms of production technology, SMIC, China's largest chip producer, is still several years behind its competitors in the world. However, it is not limited to manufacturing. Even large corporations such as TSMC and Intel rely on equipment and tools from other companies to complete their manufacturing processes. A small number of companies hold significant power in that field. ASML, a Dutch business, 
is the only company in the world capable of manufacturing a machine that chip manufacturers require to build the most modern chips. According to Hanbury, building self-sufficiency across such a broad variety of technologies and skills is extremely challenging in a semiconductor ecosystem because it is huge and complicated. In general, the leading edge will be the most difficult sector to develop self-sufficiency in. It is difficult in this situation since you require not only investment cash, but also must overcome the enormous requirements surrounding technical competence and collective experience. Because of their reliance on foreign corporations, Chinese enterprises are particularly sensitive to geopolitical conflicts, as was the case with both Huawei and SMIC in the past. Huawei developed its own smartphone processors, dubbed Kirin, for use in its devices. The chips were often based on cutting-edge technology, and they assisted the Chinese smartphone behemoth in becoming one of the world's largest participants in the smartphone market. The United States, on the other hand, placed Huawei on a trade blacklist known as the Entity List in 2019, thus cutting the Chinese business off the certain U.S. technology. Last year, the United States government issued a rule requiring foreign manufacturers who use American chip-making equipment to obtain a license before they may sell chips to Huawei. TSMC was in charge of the production of Huawei's chips. However, after the introduction of the United States rule, TSMC was no longer able to produce semiconductors for Huawei. Its smartphone business was effectively devastated all over the world as a result. SMIC is also on the United States government's blacklist, which prevents it from accessing American technology. These restrictions could be a source of concern for Chinese enterprises that are currently building their own semiconductors. Although most of these chips are still made utilizing international technology, they may still lose access to their chips if the company that manufactures them were to be barred from making them in the first place. All throughout the world, Governments are beginning to recognize semiconductors as a very strategic and crucial technology. President Joe Biden of the United States has called for a $50 billion investment in semiconductor production and research, and he has sought chip makers to locate in the country to make the investment. Intel announced plans to invest $20 billion in the construction of two new semiconductor facilities, known as FAPS, in the United States in March. Gino Raimondo, the Secretary of Commerce, told CNBC in March that the goal was to outcompete China. Because the semiconductor supply chain is heavily concentrated in Asia, the United States has sought to re-establish semiconductor production in the country, believing it is essential for national security. However, like-minded countries are also attempting to collaborate to protect the security of their semiconductor supply chains. Leading politicians and business leaders from four countries, the United States of America, India, Japan, and Australia, known as a Quad, announced plans to establish a semiconductor supply initiative in September. The initiative will be tasked with identifying security breaches and securing access to semiconductors and their critical components. A great deal of the recent conversation on semiconductor supply chains was prompted by a global chip shortage that has affected industries ranging from automobiles to consumer electronics which has worried leaders about their country's ability to secure semiconductors when they are needed most. It is possible that China has a head start on its competitors in some areas of chip development, but it will have difficulties getting to grips with cutting-edge technology, at least in the short term. SMIC, for example, is capable of producing chips with a 28 nanometer resolution on a massive scale. These may be used in televisions or even automobiles, an area in which China could excel, given the current scarcity of semiconductors on the market. To put things in context, TSMC is already researching a 3 nanometer technology, according to the company. It would take years for SMIC to learn the manufacturing procedures that TSMC has been using for years before it could catch up with the industry leader. In order to catch up and lessen reliance on the leading edge, even moving swiftly forward across these current technologies would not be sufficient, according to Hanbury. This is analogous to running a race against the clock to catch on an extremely fast runner when that runner is rapidly escaping your grasp. Do you believe China will dominate this industry? Do you think China is actually taking over the world with its semiconductors? Is it possible that China will be a ruling nation in the field of manufacturing chips? Let us know what you think down in the comments below. If you want to see more interesting videos like this one, 
do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get VIP access to our videos. Thanks for watching, guys, and with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!